Listen to me. If there was a wise man who would ever think of this, they would say in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. For I am the man himself. back here once again one last time this is the club of the man 1993 again we're catching up on some baseball news as i'm going to talk about some transactions that have gone on the past couple of months most of these are pretty minor nothing really too too major uh we had just one trade fairly recently with a former all-star pitcher who is definitely starting to get to the tail end of his career we also had another player who's on the hunt for 500 homers, that looks like that, that run may be coming to an end. And a few others as well that were a little bit more of a bigger deal, but most of these deals are pretty minor. We will, of course, have a lot more news coming up in the next few weeks as we get closer to the MLB trade deadline for 2023. And I'm hoping to have a video with the, with, um, the, 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 the trades that happen leading up to, of course, that date. Maybe I'll get some in there that was just a few seconds or whatnot in there. But we'll see, of course, what happens in the next coming weeks. So we got 18 little uh, topics I want to address here really quick. The first one is back in May. Uh, Frondel Reyes, former power hitter for the Padres and Guardians slash Indians, who has fallen off the past couple years, is now in the minor league system for the Washington Nationals. Uh, he had signed a minor league deal with the Royals earlier in the season. Uh, started the season off decent with a couple of dingers, but he continued to struggle. He was released by the Nationals, and then he signed a minor league deal with the Washington Nationals. Now, he has opt-out dates of June the 16th and July 1st. And as of today, it is currently July 12th. So both those opt-out dates have passed, and he has not opted out of his contract in the minor leagues yet. So he has not yet reached the major leagues with the Nationals, but he continues to be in the Nationals organization. Yeah, he's still very young. It already sucks to see him already deteriorating. Yeah, he's a big dude with lots of power, can destroy some pitches. Again, he had some really good years with the Padres and um, the Indians before he became the Guardians, of course. Uh, just hopefully, you know, he can get out of his fog, have, have some comebacks, and be another big power threat once again uh, down the line. So, Fran Mill Reyes is currently in the Dodd and the, the Nationals uh, minor league system. Other players who's in the minor leagues uh, right now on a minor league deal is former closer Ken Giles, or Big Head. This is one of the only pictures I could find of him. But back on May 20th, Ken Giles signed a minor league deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Of course, he's had a good track record, but it's been some time since Giles has been in good form uh, or even able to pitch. He has only tossed eight innings since the start of the 2020 season. He had Tommy John surgery uh, in 2021, and he made it back to throw just four and a third inning with the Mariners last season as he's been dealing with some shoulder and finger problems. Uh, at this time, though, Giles has not yet made an appearance in the majors with the Dodgers yet either. But, of course, he was definitely um, a strong closing candidate at one point. Uh, Giles, who, if I can see how old he is, he is... Oh, he's in the minors still, but there's no... Oh, yeah, he's... He's 32 years old right now, it looks like. So, he's got some uh, some time, of course, on him uh, to definitely um, get back in the form if he was able to. Um, I would hope he does, but again, we will just have to be something we just have to wait 
and see, of course, where it happens um, from there. Um, next up, we've got Julio Tehran signing a, a, a major league deal with the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, the former Brave uh, did actually sign a minor league deal with the Padres earlier on in the season, but on May 23rd, he had opted out of it. And on May 25th, the Brewers grabbed him as the former um, Brave has been decent in that bolt in the, that rotation for them. He has made eight starts. I think he's well. I think he's two and three. But he's like a three something ERA. So he's been a solid spark plug for them. I forgot actually that he still um, he still um, pitches. Uh, he's been around for a while. He had um, he had made a pair of All Star team. And he also finished fifth in the 2013 Rookie of the Year voting. Um, of course, his velocity though started to slip, and he left the Braves after 2019. Went to the Angels and struggled, and of course went to the Tigers in 2021. Um, and he has he allowed one run in five frames with the Tigers that year, but he has not appeared in the majors since. He's had a solid you know year with the limited starts. Give him a little bit more. Again, you could maybe see a good comeback player of the year candidate. But he's been a good um, addition, of course, for that that, that starting rotation for the Brewers. Bad news for Eric Hosmer fans. Eric Hosmer was designated for assignment and released by the Cubs back on May 25th. Of course, he has not yet been signed yet. But um, his season has been underwhelming, starting off just the 234 with two home runs. Uh, over an even 100 plate appearances. Uh, he signed a one-year deal after he kind of started to get a little lost in the shuffle, especially whenever he was originally involved in the Juan Soto trade that just that he uh, did not approve of the trade, so he instead went off to the Red Sox. And he really has not um, been the same really since. Um, and of course also um, they have... The Cubs have um, upcoming prospect Matt Mervis ready. And then Trey Mancini is also getting a lot of action at first base. And then Patrick Wisdom, who is their third baseman, also getting time at first base. Um, he didn't really seem to have much room, though, more for, for Hosmer. Unfortunately, this time again, he has not yet been re-signed yet by a different team. Um, how old is Hosmer now? He is actually... Let me find his age. Oh, he is 33 as well. So, he's starting to get up there a little bit in age as well. So, again, he's really been taking a hit over the past couple years. It wouldn't surprise me if nobody else grabs him. But, some people say he could go back to his original club and be a part of the rebuilding Royals once again. It is possible. You never know. But, um, he is, of course, released and is a free agent at this time. The latest on Gary Sanchez. Uh, Gary Sanchez, of course, at the beginning of the year was a free agent um, from the Twins. Um, he had been back and forth. Um, he was with the Giants and on a minor deal on opening day. But then he opted out in early May. And then he went to the Mets on another minor league deal. But then, of course, he was designated for assignment. And he... Um, was acquired, claimed off waivers by the San Diego Padres. And has had some, you know, power numbers, still hitting roughly around 200, but he's had a decent amount of playing time since uh, in a disappointing Padres lineup that their big sluggers aren't really hitting like the big sluggers they are. But again, you know, with a healthy Sanchez providing some pop in his bat still, he has been a decent addition for the San Diego Padres lineup. But again, it, the Padres have not really not really in contention. But a team that is in contention is the Baltimore Orioles. And on May 30th, when they put at the time they were putting all-star um, outfielder Cedric Mullins on the 10-day DL when this happened, but the Orioles have signed former Yankee and former twin Aaron Hicks. Uh Aaron Hicks was released by the Yankees just the week before. He signed with the um, division rival Orioles. 
He was off to a slow start this year, but he seems to have been kind of getting on track, hitting decent and been, and been a decent part of this new Orioles addition uh, to their lineup. I believe he's hitting now near the 260s, I believe it is. He's got, well, with the Orioles, he's hit about 260. With the Yankees, he was hitting like in the 100s. Got some pop, six homers in there, uh, but he's definitely been a nice veteran to add into this uh, building Orioles team that is making a strong push. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I check the standings here, I'm pretty sure they are up there. The our Orioles are currently in second place, two games behind um, the Tampa Bay Rays. And in the wild card race, they are just behind. Actually, no, no, they are the number one wild card team right now. So again, they're a fun, improving team with a lot of young talent that have been added in. And um, yeah, Aaron Hicks is definitely a key piece for that. Former Philly, former Yankee, Didi Gregorius signed a minor league deal with the Mariners back on June 8th. He has not yet played in the majors yet this year. Uh, he had struggled badly in the past two seasons and was released by the Phillies last August. He was a free agent until when he signed to the to the Mexican League in May of this year, and he was on a tear, hitting 359 through 26 games. Earned him another chance to be affiliated with the ranks. Um, unfortunately, though, again, Gregorius has not yet played in the majors. Uh, but he is there and hopefully you know, doing well in the minors just in case the Mariners need a little bit of a boost. Then coming back to New York, but not the Yankees, but going to the Mets, even though I pretty much believe that he's done. But my boy, Luke Voigt, who originally started this season with the Brewers, he had opted out but re-signed a new deal with the Brewers after he had won a Major League starting job over Keston Huera. Unfortunately, though, it didn't go too well as uh, Voigt uh, had hit just 221 in 22 games and struck out a good majority of his plate appearances. He was released by the Brewers and then he, he signed a minor league deal with the New York Mets and once again has not appeared in the majors since. Of course, the eyes have been on, on Boy ever since he had a um, a 22 home run season in the uh, 60 game 2020 season. So obviously, a lot of people wanted to see what his numbers would be like if he played a full season after that. Unfortunately, it has not happened since injuries have hampered him, and he just has not really been able to bring the productivity up there. Of course, um, he basically. Um, don't really have um, much to work with. Uh, of course, from when they did sign him was when Pete Alonso originally went on the DL, but he only was out for 10 days and not three to four weeks as they originally thought. So, of course, we will see because he hasn't played in the majors yet with the Mets either. We'll see, though, if something can turn around for Luke Voigt. Oh, look at this. We have another major leader who returned out of retirement. Well, not to the majors yet, but he signed a minor league deal. Former major leaguer Daniel Murphy, who usually plays the right side of the infield at second or first. He apparently has been playing with the Long Island Ducks of the Independent Amer Atlantic League. But then, um, they were pretty impressed that the Angels signed him to a minor league deal. Murphy, who is 38, had announced his retirement in January of 2021, but he recently launched a comeback bid when he signed with the Long Island Ducks in March, and he hit 331 with the Long Island Ducks through 37 games. And of course, the Angels took a gamble and signed him. Of course, the Angels infield is pretty stacked already um, with uh, Jared Walsh, Gio Urshela, Brandon Drury, and Luis... Ray Giffo, and of course, they're blocked off at the designated hitter spot with, um, with Shohei Otani. But, interesting move. I do wonder if maybe we will see Murphy back in the majors in the next year or two. I doubt we will, but nice little gamble to hear that, hey, 
Daniel Murphy, who had a couple of a couple of really really strong years as being one of the best hitter in the league, um, is trying to make a little bit of a comeback. So again, we'll see how it works out. Still no major league games played yet this season, but that is also an interesting little swerve as well. Uh, the Braves, although it hasn't been used on the main roster yet, grabbed some power as they also signed Jesus Aguilar to a minor league deal. Uh, he was released by the A's earlier in June, and he was signed by the Braves in t- on June the 14th. Uh, he hit just 221 with five home runs with the, at the time, worst team in the league, Oakland Athletics. Uh, again, they're hoping that yeah, he could someday return back to the form he had between 2017 to 2021 when he had 262 with 93 homers showing some good power in there. But again, unfortunately, that does not happen. Aguilar, though, was an all star, and again, he, um, Hit a career high 35 dingers in 2018. At 33 years old, if given the opportunity, he probably still could work with it. Of course, though, he has to get to the majors for that to actually happen. And he has not played in the majors since he was with the Athletics earlier this season. Uh, speaking of releases and no teams yet, former Red Sox Jackie Bradley Jr. was released from the Kansas City Royals. Back on June 17, 2023. He had signed a minor league deal with the Royals this offseason. Um, though he wasn't able to uh, correct the offensive nosedive that began in 2021. Uh, he um, then would go on to hit just 133. And 132 play appearances with Kansas City. Which just sucks. Um... Jackie Bradley Jr., if I can see how old he is, he's 33 as well. I um, mean, he still, you know, could maybe contribute. I don't know if any other ball plug, I mean, with how young he is, I don't know if any other ball club is willing to give him another shot. We'll have to wait and see. Kind of an overrated player I always thought he was. Because I know he had one season when he batted over 300, but it was mostly because he had that, that one strong, like, 30-game hitting streak. Because after that, he really never seemed to be the same hitter again. But we'll see, of course, if anybody else picks up Jackie as well. The Pirates, back on June the 18th, also promoted top prospect Henry Davis, um, who um, he, this AAA this season, he had 286 in 45 plate appearances. Oh, uh, only this 10 games. But, um, but the Pirates have seen enough to believe that, that he is ready for the big leagues. He's hitting about 240 with a homer and seven RBIs, but he's still seasoning out. But another future piece of the Pirates was called up that I wanted to, of course, mention. He did, of course, get his first major league home run already, which is cool. Uh, former Cy Young Award winner Dallas Keuchel also agreed to a minor league deal with the Twins. Um, of course, he'll... He has not made a major league start yet. He's been in the minors. Um, Keiko, who's 35 years old, has spent the past two years as a nightmare. Uh, he was shelled to a 6.35 ERA in 22 two thirds of innings between the White Sox, Diamondbacks, and Rangers the past couple seasons. Uh, that includes a particularly culminating 2022 campaign where he was tagged for 62 earned runs. 94 hits in just 60 and two-thirds of an inning. Ouch. Uh, of course, you know, he was starting to get back on track in the shortened 2020 season when he had a, a buck 99 ERA in 63 and a third inning. And also, he was one of the best pitchers in the league with the Astros, Braves, and White Sox between 2014 and 2020. When he pitched at 1,126 in the third inning, uh, 325 ERA, and he opposed post uh, he has long posted below average numbers, though, ever since. Again, it does feel like, though, Keiko is starting to run out of options, especially if he's bouncing between teams in the minor leagues and getting very, very limited amount of starts. So I don't know, again, if they'll ever pull the trigger on him being in the majors again, but you just never know uh, when someone could just be, be making a comeback. Uh, unfortunately, also some more bad news for you Will Myers fans. A former uh, American League Rookie of the Year 
was released by the Cincinnati Reds back on June 23rd. After signing a one-year deal for $7.5 million this past offseason, um, and they were hoping he could be, you know, be a valuable piece and be a good valuable trade candidate come the midseason. Well, unfortunately, though, Myers did not produce. He hit just 189, um, and he was on the injury list due to kidney stones in May. Um, and again, with the rebuild suddenly appearing to be over, and a lot of the household names are back. There seemed to be little room left for Will Myers, so he was designated for assignment, and he was released instead. Uh, we'll see, of course, if anybody wants to take a chance on him. He's had his history of injury, so him being injury-prone may affect it a little bit. Uh, but he's 32 years old, so he still might have something left to offer. Then we have the Angels making a couple of deals. First, they acquired um, Eduardo Escobar from the Mets in exchange for prospects Coleman Crow and Landon Marseille. Uh, Marcel, or however you pronounce it. Um, I gotta give, I mean, he's definitely not as dangerous as he used to be, but I do think Eduardo Escobar is a very underrated hitter. Especially. With, when he was with um, the Diamondbacks as well. He was definitely, you know, destroying the balls. He has thrown in a few, like, 30 homer power seasons. I don't know if we'll ever get back there again. But uh, it's a nice addition to help the Angels out with their utility infield for sure. And then, speaking of Angels, we also have Mike Moustakis, who was acquired from the Angels. Um... Uh, from the Rockies to the Angels. Uh, Moustakis, who is 34 years old, was released by the Reds in t January, uh, eating a $22 million uh, buyout in the process. Uh, he was with the Rockies on a minor league deal. Uh, he was most used as a backup infielder. And then he officially got um, traded, though, just so he can probably compete for some more spots in playing time. Uh, Musa, of course, who can play third base, second base, and maybe some, some first base as well. Could also provide some utility depth as well for the Angels as well. Again, he's 34 years old, so I don't know how much he'll be able to contribute. But again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with Moose. Uh, then we have a trade happening. Aroldis Chapman, who I forgot was no longer with the Yankees, was, tr was tr he was started the season with the Royals. On June 30th, he was traded to the Texas Rangers, one of the surprise teams, for Cole Reagans and rookie ball outfielder Ronnie Cabrera as well. had He's had a strong few months with, with the Royals. He's a seven-time All-Star. Uh, Chapman, though, posted a 4.46 ERA his final year of the Yankees and left off was left off their playoff roster due to missing a team workout. And then... Um, this hard going Southpaw owns a 2.45 ERA over 29 and third innings in 31 appearances. So he's still not pitching too bad. So definitely with, with the oops, sorry with the contending Rangers, uh, he would definitely be a great piece for them if he can of course keep it up. His velocity though has fallen a little like on average below 100 as it used to be over 100. But again, he seems to still have some energy left in the tank. So hopefully he can help produce with the Rangers, um, who are, of course, a rebuilding team. And then finally, the last piece of news. Sad news for those who want to see Nelson Cruz uh, get to 500 home runs and was hoping that the eye surgery was the thing, in fact, that affected him from hitting the ball well last year. It's not been much the same this year, unfortunately. His playing time, again, has been a little bit limited. But even when he's healthy, he's still not quite pulling it off. And I don't think him finishing his career with the Padres is where he needs to go. He should probably go back to Texas whenever, because he spent most of his seasons in Texas. Um, but yeah, he's 43 years old now. I don't know if they would even want to take another chance on him. You know, I do think this could be it. Like, like this, I don't think he's going to get the 500 home runs, sadly. If he does, cool. But if not, it's unfortunate. Um, but I think it's time he considers hanging it up as well. Again, he's had a great career. 
slight bit overrated, but still one of the best um, power hitters the past 10 years. Um, so yeah, we'll see, of course, where he ends up next, if people do want to take a shot at him. And that's my results on these transactions, guys. If you have any thoughts on these transactions, make sure you guys leave thoughts down in the comment section below. And be sure as always to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content on my channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Club of the Man 93 and also TikTok on Instagram and at the Club of the Man 1993. Make sure you give me a follow on there for more um, news coverage that I will be uh, sharing with you know with you guys. And yeah, with that being said, guys, I'm checking out. I'll catch you guys all later. Have a great rest of your night. And do not forget, in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. And for I am the man himself.